Hey, y'all, this is Troy Black. So I have a very specific word from the Holy Spirit to share with you about something that God is going to be doing in the month of July of this year. The Holy Spirit said this to me on May 23rd, and I was actually in mid-conversation with somebody else when suddenly the power and presence of the Holy Spirit came upon me, and I had to stop talking to them, and I had to go sit down and write this down. This is what I heard the Lord say. He said, this July, upheaval, shaking of nations. And then he said, I'm bringing in a remnant who knows the way of the Lord and is willing to do what is necessary to make it occur. The same way Samuel brought men of God in to change the situation during David's reign. I'm bringing my people in to settle the situation. And then the Lord gave me this side note about that phrase during David's reign. He said he had already been anointed king, but I had not yet situated him on the throne. So in God's eyes, he was already reigning because God could see the future and God knew what he had planned and he had already placed the anointing on his life. The Lord said, I'm bringing my people in to settle the situation. And he said, like when David was running from Saul, the Holy Spirit said, I will emasculate the captors that those who are lifting up their hands against my rule and authority on this earth. And then he uh, d- he explained when he said emasculate the captors, he said metaphorically, meaning disable their ability to continue doing what they are doing. And then the Holy Spirit said a trembling is coming, a massive quaking, a rattling of, of shoulders, shoulders. Then he said men are building the foundations of this earth upon their own shoulders and expecting me to be okay with it, but their relentlessness will be their undoing. He said, I will strip the rods from their hands, teaching them to no longer declare war apart from my leading. And then he said, declare war for the sake of what is right, not because of vain idols and self-indulgent ideologies. And then the Holy Spirit said, a gathering of sorts, a strengthening of the men ready for battle, a remnant. And I knew when he said the men ready for battle here, he's using this picture of like an old testament army but he's not just talking about men he's talking about the the men and women of god the children of god and i hear the holy spirit confirming that right now and then he said a remnant he said a gathering together and abandoning so that my will will be accomplished he said i'm all over this and i will accomplish this i will see to it yes yes it will be done Then I heard the Holy Spirit say, I'm changing fortresses, the resting places of the captors, the ones who have endangered my people and made them cry out. Then he said, show me your hands so that I can judge between the corrupt, the ones making money off of the helpless and the good, the ones fighting for the rights of the poor and defenseless. And then the Lord said, the burdens of the destitute have become my burden. I hear it day and night as their cries come before me. He said, who is this that says the Lord is busy? He won't come down. He won't upset the plans that we've made behind closed curtains, but I will act and this will be a deliverance like none other. And then I heard the Lord say, vengeance is mine. I am the Lord and I have already laid out my plans before the ones who are listening and not compromising. And then he said, the promised word is coming about now, says the Lord. And then the Lord said this to me specifically, He said, I know you don't know what this means, and that's okay. (laughs) He said, I will do it nonetheless. The Lord gave me one more thing to share, and I'm just going to be very straightforward about this. This is 1 1 Corinthians 2.4. Paul says here, And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Listen to me. I'm not going to do a really cool transition here or anything like that. I'm just going to say this plainly. There are some people listening to me right now who are far away from the Lord. Maybe you're going to church. Maybe you're still praying. Maybe you're still reading your Bible, but you do not feel that connection to the Lord you once felt. And the Lord is saying, just come back into my throne room. Just believe in what Jesus did again. This is what Colossians 2.10 says. It says, and in him you have been made complete talking about jesus and he is the head over every ruler and authority one of the temptations in either prophesying or listening to prophecy is to put our hope in the future is to put our hope in july 
is to put our hope in something that God is going to do. And yes, if God says something, I believe he's absolutely going to do it. But our hope should be full right now, not in something that's going to happen, but in what has already happened, what we've already received through Christ Jesus. This is what what Romans 15, 13 says. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You want to know how to have hope every single day, no matter what happens and no matter how long you have to wait for something that God has promised. It's by simply believing. It says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Believing what? Believing that Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection are still exactly what we need. And it's still the ticket for us to come into fellowship with the Father, to walk into his throne room today and spend time with the creator of the universe, the God who loves us. So I'm just calling you home right now. If you've been running, even if you've only been running in your heart, thank you, Holy Spirit. I want you to pray with me. And I want you to just set everything else aside for a moment. You don't have to pray what I'm praying, but just talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Say, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you that I get to be complete in you because of what you did, not because of what I have done. I've messed this up, Lord, but you never messed up, Jesus. And then you gave your very life as a sacrifice for me. I'm coming back, Father. I'm running back in, full of hope, full of joy, full of peace, full of belief in what Jesus has done. His blood is my covering today. His life is my joy today. His presence is my completeness today. And I'm going to move forward in faith no matter what comes next, no matter what comes my way, because of the one who is walking with me, your Holy Spirit, who you sent to abide in me, to be with me. And Jesus, I know that you said you would never leave me, and you're right here today. I'm putting all my hope in you, and in this beautiful friendship I have with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I hope you all have enjoyed this. I tried to keep it short. A few things. Number one, if you have a hard time hearing from God on a daily basis, I encourage you to get this book. It's called Stop Worrying, or if you deal with stress or anxiety on a normal basis, I believe God can use this book to change your life. It's packed full of scripture, but it's also packed full of personal testimonies of times where God has brought me out of a season or an experience of anxiety into a place of peace, even before the situation changed. And there's a lot of Uh, supernatural things God has done that I talk about in this book as well. So I hope you get a chance to read that book. Uh, You can go look at the reviews on amazon.com, but also please uh, go subscribe to this channel on YouTube, but also you can follow me on Facebook as well. And then make sure you go subscribe to my new channel. It's called sermons by Troy black right now. I'm about to change the name of it though, but you can find the link in my suggested channels link on YouTube. So I love you all so much. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.